we are looking at eye movements, specifically how we see. We see not with our eyes, but with our brains. We have light rays, which simply bombard our eyes and stimulate our nerves, but our brains have learned to make sense of that, to create a picture on the canvas of our minds. Now, we all have a blind spot created by the optic nerve there, but we don't notice it. Our brain fills in the blanks because we continue to scan as well, so we don't notice it. So our eyeballs really need to move in order to see and create a picture of reality. And as an experiment, you can stop the video right here, and if you stare at the uh, blue O in the middle, you will see that the data on the outside begins to fade away. And again, that's because our eyeball needs to move in order for us to create a picture of reality on our brains. That's very important. Another experiment. Stop the video. Take a look at that picture of a space alien. Notice how your eyeballs move. It does not focus in one place, but it moves around scanning to create that picture. And again, when you look at anything, and they've done a lot of research on eye movement research, we'll be looking at that. Our eyeballs do not focus. It moves around to help us paint that picture of reality on our brain. Our brain does not replicate reality. Our brain creates a picture of reality. Now, when we perceive, there are three visual regions, and we're going to look at each one of those. There's the Foveal, and you see that right in the middle, 1 to 2% of your total vision, we see about 3 to 6 letters at a time clearly. They're parafoveal, that is uh, 24 to 30 letters, and we see that not very clearly. It's kind of blurry, and we see right there. And then there's a peripheral, everything else where it's just kind of a blur out there. Now the question is, with that very small in focus viewing region, how is anyone able to read more than 10 words a minute? The answer, efficient readers are able to read quickly because of the top-down flow of information as depicted in the transactive model, which you'll see in a little bit. The brain is filling in the blanks and making predictions as we read. We perceive three to six letters. The brain fill in the blanks using semantics and syntax to guess what the correct words are or might be. Letter clues are used to verify or correct then those predictions. The brain is creating meaning with print, not sounding out words. Reading is not sounding out words. Reading is the process of creating meaning with print print. And effective readers use minimal letter clues to create meaning with print. And as you see, effective readers only focus on about 60% of the words as they read. There's an example of the fulvio, the, the region that's clear. Again, you can see these saccades. We'll be looking at that. In order for our brains to operate efficiently, we don't record reality. We take in only the salient elements, and our brain fills in the blanks. This is an evolutionary perspective, and we do this so we can survive. For example, there's the man sees a shape with the top-down information. The brain automatically goes, ah, oh, a snake. Now, that could have been a rope, but in this case, it's a snake, and it allows the human being to react instantaneously. If the eyes had to go all over it, it would take longer and re recreate that picture. So it's the top-down flow of information that enables us to make sense more quickly of what we see. Our brain does not replicate reality. It does not record reality. It reconstructs a version of reality. Why do I have pictures of Lady Gaga here? And again, it relates to that snake picture. These all are a little bit different. Now, I use Lady Gaga because she seems to look so different in all of her pictures. Now, our brain has taken, our brain has not memorized each and every version of Lady Gaga, but our brain has recorded 
the salient elements of Lady Gaga. So when we see, we're able to predict, fill in the blanks, and go, aha, Lady Gaga. Even when she's wearing a meat dress, I'm able to say, ah, there's Lady Gaga.